My guest today is Peter Glick. Peter joins us from California. He is the co-founder and was the founding president of the Pacific Institute. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of water might look like in a post-COVID world. Even without the pandemic, we have a whole series of very difficult water-related problems. Um, perhaps the, the worst is that it's now the 21st century and there are still 800 million people worldwide that don't have access to safe and affordable drinking water and over 2 billion people worldwide that don't have access to adequate sanitation services. And again, even without a pandemic, even without a public health crisis, that is a public health crisis. There are very serious water-related diseases that are associated with the failure to have safe and affordable water and sanitation, cholera, dysentery, typhoid, malaria, the, the whole series of difficult diseases that we should have gotten rid of many, many, many decades ago, but, but we haven't. And, and even in the developed world, even in the United States, there are populations without access to safe water. And one of the things that the pandemic has revealed uh, is that we know that water is critical for protecting public health. One of the first things that we were told to do was wash our hands more. And, and so what do you do if you don't have access to safe and affordable water? What if you do if you're in sub-Saharan Africa and, and you or your children have to walk miles and miles every day to get even a minimum amount of questionable water for drinking and for cooking and for traditional sanitation? But now we're faced with a pandemic and the pandemic has raised some awareness about that. In a sense, that's a good thing where there's been more of a conversation due to COVID-19 about the importance of access to safe water and sanitation. As you think about the world that COVID is creating for us, do you think we will be paying more attention to issues like water or will we be so distracted that we will be paying less attention? I think both of those are possibilities. And I think we're probably seeing both of those occurring. We're seeing enormous distraction where people are having to deal with economic dislocations. People are having to deal with, with air pollution problems. People are having to do with employment issues. People are having to do with, as, as we've seen in the last several weeks in the United States, bubbling animosities around unresolved racial issues and social issues. Uh, and that, of course, distracts from our ability to deal with other kinds of environmental problems like water or climate change. On the other hand, we are seeing some positive signs. We're seeing some growing attention to environmental issues. We're seeing some growing attention to the issues of fresh water. And I'm hoping that that will continue. What are the lessons you hope we will learn from this moment of COVID? Probably the most important lesson to learn is that water is connected to everything. It's connected to our economies. It's connected to our, our public health and our individual health and our, the health of our ecosystems. Uh, it's connected to politics and, and our corporate sector. Water is tied to everything that we care about. And the more we figure out how to move toward more sustainable management and use of water resources, uh, the more we make a transition from where we are today, which we know is not a sustainable system, to a future, a soft path for water, as I've described in some of the things I've written, uh, the more likely we are to solve not just water problems, but energy problems and poverty problems and conflict problems and economic problems. Uh, these things are all tied together. And, and that's a critical lesson that I think we're learning you know, we've been learning it in recent years. We're learning it again because of the pandemic, the idea that public health is related to the economy and to the environment and to our institutions. Uh, th those are critical lessons to learn. And, and if again, if I'm going to be optimistic, then we're going to move out of the pandemic, but we're not going to forget those lessons. And, and what are your fears? What are you afraid we will not learn? The pessimistic side of me says that I know that there are solutions, but we're not moving fast enough to, to address them. Uh, if, if there's anything that the pandemic has highlighted, it's that we're not prepared for these kinds of sudden shocks. Climate change is, is a real problem. It's tied to water. I've worked on climate and water forever, but our inability to 
prepare for climate change is, is not that dissimilar to our inability to address some of these issues that, that the COVID-19 pandemic has raised. Uh, so we see in the United States, we know what we ought to be doing from a, health, a public health perspective to deal with the pandemic, and yet we're not dealing with it. People won't wear masks or, or for political reasons, states want to reopen the economy too fast. Uh, we know what to do about climate change and we know what to do about water, but I'm a little worried that, that even though we know what to do, we're not going to do those things or we're not going to do those things fast enough.